Hello, and welcome to the NISD EdChat podcast, your regular look into the innovative projects going on within the district and the educators who make them possible. I'm your host, Matt Freimeyer, and today we'll be talking about building community beyond the classroom. We sat down with a few Northside librarians and had a roundtable discussion about connecting students to their interest groups and helping them discover a better sense of identity and community. Wanted to thank you all for being here today. Uh, going around the table, starting with you, would you please introduce yourselves? Hello, my name is Xenia Bayardo, and I am the librarian at Stevens High School. Hi, I'm Janet Wenninghoff. I am a middle school academic technology coach. I'm AJ Delamontes, and I'm a librarian at Sol Ross Middle School. Hi, everyone. This is Stacy Tharp, and I'm the librarian at Northwest Crossing Elementary. Northside librarians make a concerted effort to create a community within their school and even beyond the school's walls. What are some of the ways you do this and why is it important? What are the benefits? I know at um, uh, uh, my school where I'm at or any school I'm ever at, I'd like to build a community of readers and literacy lovers. So um, I'm constantly sharing books and reading and the love of reading and authors, um, obviously to our students, but not just our students, also to um, my teachers and getting them excited about reading and sharing with their students and uh, getting them excited to be readers themselves. Themselves. Um, and not just to our ELA teachers, to the entire school community as well, to get reading um, into their minds and making sure that we are a community of readers. And I have a story I'd like to share. But before I do that, I really want to give a shout out to Xenia because she has so much energy and love um, as she promotes what she's doing on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, And she really does have a huge influence on a lot of the librarians. So I really just want to say thank you for that, because it is very motivating for us. Um, I know that, as she was saying, it really is important to build that community. And in a past school. I had uh, was lucky enough to receive a Northside grant, and we had noticed that there were just several parents, um, actually a large number of our parents, who just simply were not coming up to the school. They weren't showing up for parent conferences or events, and we really wanted to reach those families. And we realized, well, we can keep wishing for them to show up here, or we can go to them. And so there were several apartment complexes that fed into our school. And so what we did is we um, were able to go into one of the um, offices of one of the apartment complexes, and we provided events there for the kids and their families. And we would give book giveaways. We would have holiday activities. um, We even did a Dr. Seuss night where we made green eggs and ham and, and did other really fun things. And it was just a great way to get those families who... Because maybe in the past they weren't um, strong students and maybe they felt uncomfortable um, in the school setting. It was such a great way to build those relationships. And it really is a two-way street. I mean, a child's not going to be successful unless the parents and the educators both work together um, for their child. And so that really is one great way to do that um, is to to think outside the box and, you know, go to the community if we have to. And it really was um, a very fun and successful activity. At Sol Ross, uh, we've started a vegetable garden and that's really helped change the way our greater community sees us. Um, not only do we do everything a typical old school library does like research uh, events and checking out books, but we've also extended our reach to the outdoors in the form of a substantial community garden. I believe we're about to 11 beds right now. Um, I think it's important because as technology continues to change the way patrons use the library, it's important for libraries also to see how they can best serve their community. Uh, For us to serve as an example of health and wellness and the connection that you make with the earth and when you grow vegetables is really kind of helped our kids see that not everything comes from H-E-B and that there is an alternative to fast food. Um, I think the best part really is, is that it's inspired our kiddos to grow their own vegetables at home. And that's really that's really the end game. That's really what we're going for. Uh, as far as the garden is concerned. Um, we've also kind of come to see that the garden gets people involved, whether it's students making connections with their grandparents because their grandparents grow vegetables or our custodian teaching us how to graft an apple tree because he does it at home or even an organization like San Antonio Food Bank helping us grow our garden in size. Uh, the garden really lends itself to all sorts of individuals and situations and has really worked as a conversation starter and a means of bringing outside organizations and individuals onto our campus. I mean, 
I think everybody loves a garden and we've been able to capture a lot of support and a lot of interest because of it. And I know I've said this before, um, but I just want to say hats off to you, um, AJ, because it's really good to show our kids that learning happens everywhere. Right. And it doesn't necessarily have to happen to happen in, you know, the traditional sense of classroom. So the library can be found in the library in between shelves. But guess what? The library can library can also be found in the flower beds, in the garden, mm -hmm. getting all dirty and, and, and learning about a different way of learning. Right. So that's awesome. Tell us about some of the clubs on your campus. How do they reflect campus culture and community? At the elementary level, we have a wonderful student council, and our student council is involved with every single activity um, on campus. They um, take pictures for the yearbook. They also help out with activities when we had our Veterans Day ceremony. They were stationed throughout the hallways as the veterans came in, were helping to walk them down uh, to where the performance was going to take place in the ceremony. Um, I love our art club. They're always um, making posters to advertise different events around the school, such as the uh, Christmas musical or book fair or author visits. They're the ones that make the posters. Um, and I have a crochet club, which I really enjoy doing. Um, my maker spaces in the morning. Um, Monday through Thursday, I have maker spaces and I do invite the parents to come and work along with the children. Um, but on Friday, I have a crochet club and I have teachers and parents and kids all in the crochet club um, learning different skills. And that's something that I really enjoy. Um, in the high school, we have, um, I think the high, this is my second year in high school, and it's so amazing to see all of the things happening in high school. Um, it's a little city of very active people. Um, we have, you know, ROTC and Studico and Black Student Union, and I'm the sponsor for Folklorico and the writing club and book club. And um, we have a lot of events, a lot of things for kids to get involved in. Mm -hmm. And at the high school level, we want to keep them uh, busy and involved and interested in the things that they're doing. So um, there's just a lot to choose from. I can be there working late till 6, 7, 8 p.m. And there are still kids on campus mm -hmm. um, active and doing things with their club and their friends. So it's pretty amazing to see all of the, the great things happening in high school, not just mm -hmm. during the school hours, but even after and before. And I think middle school is taking a good cue from high school in terms of offering kids opportunities to connect with each other, to network in the way of clubs. One thing that's kind of organically helped out is um, middle schools and high schools are starting 10 minutes later this year. And so lots of kids at the middle school level are on campus pretty early. And so it's an opportunity for clubs to happen. Uh, Jen is absolutely right. We definitely look at what the high school is doing and kind of what the trends are and what kids are interested in, because I think that's really what it's all about is like giving what the kids want. Um, we've got quite a few clubs at, at Ross as, as, as well, but I think our two biggest ones come in the form of robotics and mariachi. Uh, mar uh, robotics is something you'll find at most campuses, but our numbers are, I, I believe they're uh, impressive. We get on average 60 plus kids that participate each year. And because of our community volunteers, the shout out to Philip Mana, because he does so much um, because of those volunteers, we've been able to quietly establish ourselves as leaders in the district as far as middle school programs are, are concerned in terms of robotics. Uh, we have a strong relationship with our corporate sponsor capital group, and that allows us access to professionals really that bring their own passions to our campus uh, as mentors. Uh, again, Mr. Mana is an ex-student mentor that has never left really. And now essentially he's mentoring 60 plus kids um, so we're very thankful for the time that he puts in. Uh, another club, you can't talk about Sol Ross and not mention our mariachi program. Uh, with an 88% Latino population, Ross and the Hispanic culture really go hand in hand. Woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised how much interest the program gets, actually. When we have our fifth grade parents come in and uh, and the students visit the campus for the first time, uh, Mr. Gajapin, our director, he does a great job, really, of building relationships with their kiddos. And you can really kind of see that sense of pride in the kids when they have on their mariachi uniform mm -hmm. and they're at all these kind of fancy it. events and <laughs> doing what they do. Uh, many of our parents have grown up with the music and they really appreciate the Hispanic culture and they kind of want to instill that in their son or daughter at that with that, that kind of that same level of pride that they have um, because we have such great music programs on campus. It, it's been easy for us to really grow our mariachi numbers. 
often authors and experts are brought into libraries around the district and speak to students on their fields of expertise and lead students in activities. Why do you think it's important for students to get this sort of view outside the classroom? I'm, I'm a huge believer in really the power of influence. Um, as a student, if I'm exposed to something unfamiliar, it suddenly becomes somewhat familiar. Uh, whether it's talking to college professors through a Zoom webinar or speaking with professionals through NEPRIS or even having a guest speaker, I think the end is always the same. Our kids get a chance to communicate with someone that they may never have had that chance to speak with. It really opens things up. Um, and I also think it kind of sparks a level of curiosity that we hope eventually leads to some sort of action. I think if we all think back to our own experiences as students, it's really the programming and the special events that we really remember. And uh, that speaks to the level of importance it really has in our kids' lives. I, I completely agree. And and one thing that's just wonderful about being in Northside and having access to all this amazing technology is that when I was a, the, a librarian over at Garcia Middle School, there was a group of seventh grade boys who were non-readers and their uh, teacher came to me and we were trying to think of ways to get these boys to like reading. So we introduced them to the works of Carl Duker, who um, writes a lot of sports books uh, like Gutless and uh, Jim Candy and Payback Time and just wonderful stories. And she we checked them all out of the library and put them all in our classroom. And then suddenly the boys were hooked and they were so excited that they formed their own unofficial Carl Duker fan club. And I was so touched by that, that I contacted the author and I just wanted to share with him and just thank him for his writing and that he got these middle school boys to suddenly love reading. And as we were talking, um, we decided to uh, set up a Skype visit and I asked him how much he would charge. And he was so happy with the story that he says, I'll just Skype with you for free. Mm -hmm. And so the boys uh, came in with their lunch one day into the library and on this huge screen, we have Carl Duker appear. And one of the boys just started to cry. Aww. And he said, this this is the best day of my life. And it was so touching and so amazing that, it you know, to have that connection. And when we can bring that through Skype or through these author visits, it really does make a difference in a child's life. And it was just absolutely wonderful. And I can't wait to do another Skype visit with another author. I really like the making the connection or helping them make the connection that um, uh, learning can happen anywhere. It doesn't have to happen in the traditional sense, the traditional classroom, you know, Monday through Friday, August through May. Um, it happens all day, every day. Right. So um, to help them see that learning can be done anywhere, you just have to have an open mind and willing and receptive for it. Um, so if it happens in the garden or if it happens uh, with an after school, club or if it happens during the summer or whatever, um, just be open to something new and something different and be open to the learning that you and the growth that comes from that. And I think technology has really brought down some of the barriers in terms of bringing outside people into the school. When I think back to my first couple of years teaching to get a guest speaker, it would be a background check and coordinating a time and when could they come and they're only going to see one of my class periods. And so it's a small group of kids. And now with the tech aspect of it, you can connect with somebody across town, across the straight state, across the country. And that's really powerful. How can schools and libraries help a student find identity and community? For me as an elementary librarian, the one thing that I would love to instill in my kids before they go off to middle school is just having empathy for one another and really looking at themselves as global citizens and really trying to um, to read a lot of novels and share a lot of novels with them that teach empathy and acceptance and understanding for other children whose lives are much different from them, um, who might have a different religion or come from another country. I That's so, so important to me. And really to teach that lesson to a child, one of the best ways to do that is through a novel where you're really seeing the feelings and you know the emotions of a character. Um, I feel like that can have a very strong impact um, on kids when you think about books like Wonder or the thing about Georgie or Fire Girl or just anything that gets kids to really think beyond themselves. I just think literature is just such a wonderful way to do that. I completely agree with what uh, Stacey's saying. Uh, diversity in program and diversity in reading material is huge. 
Uh, I think this helps kids see themselves in a bigger realm. Uh, but just as important as building, uh, but just as important, I think, is also building relationships. Uh, in fact, for a librarian in school, I think maybe the most important thing is to build relationships uh, with our kiddos. Uh, when we talk about our kiddos at Ross, we often emphasize the notion that they're like our kids. Uh, we have a collective sense of responsibility on our campus. And that like quickly leads to a sense of unity among our colleagues and our students, uh, much like a family that kind of has your wacky uncle or your silly mm -hmm. aunt or, or cousin, just loving cousins. Our staff plays that role of a family for our kids and our mm -hmm. kids tend to gravitate towards that family member that they really appreciate and that they really love. And when kids find that sense of community in their school, I think they're much more willing and, and they're much more able to tackle tough assignments and challenges because they know that this is a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really think, yeah, it's really important, you know, to build that sense of community um, and to listen to our students. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, yes, listening to them in the classroom, but also if they're just in the library, in the cafe area and they're talking about D&D. &D, oh, they like that game. Mm -hmm. I should provide that for them. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, they're talking about the new <laughs> office episode or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should get them a puzzle of the office <laughs> or something. So just listening to them. Um, um, at being there open to hearing them out and what they what they want if they want to form a new club and they need a sponsor yeah be there for them and and so that they can form that sense of identity or find themselves with their own community of friends in in the school and I'm sorry. One thing I just wanted to mention here is I, a story came to me just a, a few seconds ago, reminding me of the importance of a multicultural collection. And if there's any librarians that are listening or teachers with your uh, class libraries to please really take the time to make sure you truly have a collection that reflects the backgrounds of all your children. Um, my very first year as a librarian, I had a fifth grade girl come in and she said, um, I want to read a novel with um, a girl like me. And I said, OK. And so as we were looking, she says, you know, she goes, the thing is, is that I can't find a, a story about a black girl unless she's a slave. Mm -hmm. And it really hit me that. You know, I have my nonfiction, I mean, my um, historical fiction collection, but I really didn't have a lot of other novels at that time that had a strong young black girl as the main character. And I've never forgotten that. And so I've always tried to make sure that I do have a well-rounded uh, multicultural collection because you're that those students are always looking for that character that they can identify with. And so please, teachers and librarians, you know, really take that to heart and look at your own collection and and see how you can um, kind of improve it and make sure that you really are meeting the needs of all your kids. So I'm going to put on my parent hat to think about this one. Um, I think as a parent, when our kids start to grow and transition into those secondary schools, mm -hmm. middle school and high school, you know, we worry about them finding their spot. And mm -hmm. so my oldest daughter, very quiet, very introverted, kind of an old soul. Mm -hmm. And so when she was in middle school, mm -hmm. library was her place. Mm -hmm. that, those were her people. And she really connected with the librarian and that became a home for her. Yeah, I love oh, that. That's love nice. to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Events like Nerdvonicon, Storyfest, and Library Palooza are held annually. How do special events like these benefit students' sense of identity and community? First of all, hats off to NISD mm -hmm. and the rock star NISD librarians for having events of this caliber. It, it's really mm -hmm. impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Woods always talks about our district being a destination district for families, but I think the same can be said for professionals. Having these type of events at our uh, uh, having these type of uh, events places our library program. I think like on a national level, to be I quite agree. honest, uh, the amount of time and effort it takes for for to put these things together, it, it's really impressive and it doesn't go unnoticed and it's very much appreciated by all participants. But events like Nerdmonicon, Library Palooza and Swordfest, they really serve as havens for our readers and learners. Mm -hmm. um, some of our kids find their tribe at these type of events and that level of confidence that develops as they see others share their interest and passion. It, it's really nice. It's, it's great to see. Um, I also think that modern learners are more apt to network through social media and these large events kind of provide an avenue for them to find other students with similar interests. Um, kind of just like our magnet school service places where like-minded students will congregate and come together, the same can be said for these events. 
Yeah, I uh, finding your tribe and your people. That's exactly what I think of when I think of Nirvana Con Library mm-hmm. Please Destroy Fest. Um, I am a reader and I love YA. Mm-hmm. Um, so when Library Police comes around, yeah, I am a big nerd and I love it. And um, I am probably known to push a kid aside to get to my favorite <laughs> author. But I do say excuse me while I do that. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I am on the committee for Nirvana Con. Um, I ashamed to say that I am not a manga comic book reader but I truly believe in the program and the books for them because when you go to NirvanaCon and you see the kids how excited they are how appreciative they are to have this event because they have quote unquote found my people (laughs) Um, they get so excited that they're not the only ones that love the costume and the (laughs) wigs and and the makeup and the contouring and the (laughs) building of the uh, of the you know cosplay they found other people that mm-hmm. like it too not just other people in their little circle at their school but right. uh, at other schools and mm-hmm. and so when they are so appreciative to have this little mini con um, that's enough for me to say you know what yeah I'll continue mm-hmm. doing this uh, being on this community it's awesome uh, and, I, and I really do have to give a shout out to secondary librarians I don't know how they continue to get these amazing huge authors year after year we beg um, for I was going to say <laughs> Alan Gratz, who, you know, wrote Refugee. He is going to be there February 29th. And mm-hmm. I'm beyond excited. Uh, I just I really my hats off to them. I'm so proud to be a, a Northside librarian every single year when that list comes out. I'm just blown away. Um I know that the elementary librarians that put together Story Fest do such an amazing job. And another way to build community, um, besides being a community of readers, is a community of writers. And the Alley librarian, uh, Deanna O'Mara, had come up with the idea for all students who love to write to bring their stories to Story Fest and have them on display um, at the school. And it's just this huge, you know, walls of writing where the kids would come in and see their own writing and and really identify, not only be so proud of themselves, but to see all of these other amazing writers around the district. And it really, it it gets you. It really, it's, it's a, it's very emotional for me. Every, all three of these events, they're just amazing. And I'm so proud to be in Northside and be a part of that. Well, and kudos to all the organizers, not only for making the events happen, but making sure that the kids get there. You know, yes. admin, librarians, putting together transportation and offering up to all the students a ride there and a ride back. It really makes it possible for all kids that want to attend to attend. And we can't forget, too, that all these events attract kids from all over the city. This is not mm-hmm. just a Northside thing. Um, kids from all over the city really want to. Uh, participate as well. Yeah, it's a really good way to bring, you know, when authors are on their author tours, Mm -hmm. um, like I say, authors are my rock stars. So when they're (laughs) on their tours, um, we always ask, you know, publishers and authors come down to South Texas, come down to San Antonio. We have readers and writers and students and Mm -hmm. um, nerds that want to listen to you too (laughs) down here. And for some reason, they don't come down to Austin, I mean, San Antonio often. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way to do it. You know, having Library Palooza and uh, Story Fest and Nirvanacon, having that available for them. This is how we bring those authors down. And if you haven't attended, you have to attend. This really is. They are really all world class events. Mm-hmm. Our Northside ISD mission statement is every day, every student grows in confidence, curiosity and capability. How does building community align to our mission? For me, um, just as someone who works at the elementary level, um, it's such a great place to begin building that community with parents. And one way that I like to do that is whenever parents come up uh, to school for conferences and they have a child who's struggling in reading, and it might be a situation where the parent's unhappy and you know the child is struggling, one thing that I've asked every administrator in every school I've ever worked in is at the very end of that meeting, please bring the parent to the library. And I take that time to show them books that they'll be able to read with their child. I talk to them about Overdrive, our wonderful Overdrive collection, how there's a dyslexia font for the eBooks, how there's audiobooks. So if their child has a book that they're reading, to listen to the audiobook and follow along as they're reading, just to give them kind of a bit of hope and and some skills and some resources 
that can help make something um, that they're struggling with now, but maybe to make it a little bit better and to make and to end on a very positive note. And that's very important to me um, to be able to do that, because when the child sees the educators and the parents working together, I feel like that does give them a bit more confidence um, to be able to succeed. I, I think like as educators that we enter an unwritten bond with our parents in greater community. Um, our kids spend eight plus hours with us nearly every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the remainder of that time is with their families. And I think if you want to have that whole child that grows in confidence and curiosity and capability, I think it's important that both ends of the spectrum like continually bridge themselves in some capacity. Uh, two separate entities like working in isolation really is not going to give the kids that lifelong learning experience that they really deserve. Um, we have to open our doors and essentially tell our community, hey, we've got your kids during the day, but I need you to take care of them at night. And of course, mm-hmm. on the weekends. Uh, <laughs> but together, we're going to get this done um, yes. in order for them to blossom as learners. I think students need to see what begins at school continues in their homes and vice versa. Um, school and home life are basically two circles in this Venn diagram. Mm-hmm. But the item that we share in common is our students. And that really should be our focus. In the high school, the kids spend a lot of time at our at our campus. Um, like I said, sometimes they're there uh, either really early in the morning for band practice or ROTC or dance practice or something, um, or they're really late at night for any of the clubs or the other activities that they're doing. So they're on our campus uh, a lot of hours of the day, more so than probably at home. Mm-hmm. And so... I, we want to send the message to our students and their families that um, here on, on our campus, we're going to take care of them in whatever um, they need for their confidence, for their curiosity, and whatever they're capable or interested in. Um, we're going to take care of them here at Stevens High School. And I think to kind of round it out, uh, when I think about the role that library services plays and academic technology plays, it often goes Mm -hmm. hand in hand Mm -hmm. because we're talking about those rich experiences that happen at our school that kids remember, like AJ pointed out earlier. Mm -hmm. So special events that ring true for kids. And that really does foster that sense of community. And it helps the kids be curious about things that they didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. What do you think about building community at Northside? We'll be having a follow-up ed chat with educators and administrators around the district on January 14th, 2020. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at NISD Ed Chat or using hashtag NISD Ed Chat for more information. That's going to do it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube for more updates and more episodes. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.